All right, we'll call the meeting to order at 5.31. And we'll start with our public input period. I just want to acknowledge that uh, I was pleased that uh, Mr. Harum got the notice in the Carriage Town News. And he's got three months at a time. I think that's appropriate. I mean, I, to do it every month, yeah, I think you'd forget occasionally. And, and by doing it in three months, that should not be a problem. So if you guys are happy with that, I'm happy with it. Okay. Excellent. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I know it's their deadlines are tough. Well, the amount of time you need to have this stuff in there at a time. So if the three months works right, then we'll relay that to the meeting. Yeah. Okay. Um, do we have any announcements? I don't think we do. Okay. Financials? Okay, so I brought the manifest. They do look large because it is the beginning of the school year when we typically have the most purchasing. So I'll let you sign those and pick those up before I leave. In your board pack is the first current year financial. It doesn't have that handy dandy sheet where I compare to the prior month because there is no prior month. This is the first one of the year. So next month you will have that back. Um, just a few items to note in here. The salaries of teacher designs does show overspent because of the switching and without using people's names. The person moving into the math position, the person backfilling the math position, and then other turnover that we had in track changes. So it's the the overspend there is offset by savings in other areas of the budget that we previously talked about. Um, you will see on special ed private tuition, there is a number that's actual. It's in there as actual because it's actually been charged, but that where we created this budget would be utilizing the special ed trust. And so we haven't requested that reimbursement yet for the trust. So we've removed the encumbrance, but since the actual charge is there, it's there until we receive the reimbursement from the trust. Um, and then just the salaries of the special ed teachers was a 2.0 FTE to a 2.4 FTE. So that's why that's showing a little bit overspent. And I think that was all the highlights I had. Does anyone have any questions? What was the special education change? 2.0 to 2.4. So I don't know if anyone wants to expand on that. Uh, sure. We uh, we had uh, one of our special ed teachers uh, moved from full time to part time. And, uh, oh, okay. Never mind. Okay. You just jogged my memory. <laughs> <laughs> so it was easy. I don't know. Number 2.4. That one's yours. Done signing those. I'll grab them before I go to Kenzie. Thank you. Office report. Great, thank you very much. I uh, would be asking this evening, if you recall, uh, this board when we were budgeting for this fiscal year, we moved uh, a sizable amount of money out of the operating budget, the draft operating budget, with the reliance on the special education trust uh, to take care of um, our tuition bill for students in special education for this year for our district. And so in order for us to have the trust expenditure, we would be looking for a motion this evening from the board uh, to approve um, uh, the special education trust fund expenditure. So if we need to dig into that with any detail, I would request that we do that in non-public, just given the size of our uh, special education student population. And it becomes identifiable based on the information that we would provide, but this was information that we had shared prior when we were budgeting for this year. So we just need to have the board take action on that. Molly just will move into that budget as well. Just because one of the things that trustees want is the board. Yeah. Correct. I mean, it needs, just needs to be reflected in the minutes. Okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, I'll make the motion to approve the special education trust fund expenditure. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. No. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. The uh, curriculum corner is uh, there are two uh, editions of it now. It's a video interview of our principals highlighting all of the things happening academically within our schools. Um, the first week it was uh, three or four. Uh, 
different principals from different levels. This most recent taping included our very own Mr. French. I did link um, the first edition of it for, so you could kind of get a flavor of what it was. It's hosted by Chris Andrisky um, and Eric Chellis, um, who is uh, our, our newest uh, AV coordinator, um, was able to take that. Do you want to talk about your experience yesterday? Or? Sure. Yeah, it was, it was yesterday. It was yesterday, yeah. It was um, a lot more high tech than I anticipated with you know the lapel mics and making sure it was hidden underneath and it was really a well done. Uh, yesterday, uh, it was all about uh, competency-based education and talking about you know, about mainly the reporting and, and the products, of course, that come out. Um, it was it was myself, Kate Lucas from from Stratum, uh, and uh, the principal of industry, Brian McCluskey, and then Chris Andrewski and I. So it, it it turned more into a conversation between the four of us and a discussion about SAU wide what we're doing with CBE, but also you know in our schools, and um, we hope that. Uh, it answers a lot of the parent questions that parents have had over the last couple of years about kind of the why behind uh, ALMA reporting or CB reporting and the benefits to all of our students. And, um, you know, they move from, from pre-K through 12th grade. So uh, it's, uh, yeah, it, it was uh, a little nerve-wracking being on camera on all that type of thing because I'm not used to that, um, you know, where I, where I can't, um, there's no cuts or anything. It's just it was live, so it was it was it was pretty awesome. Yeah. And uh, Chris did a great job of facilitating, and uh, I'm, I'm happy I did it. I'm, and I'm happy that um, our families and our parents are seeing what he did, not seeing hearing what we're doing in schools. So where can it be seen? I uh, it's I don't know when it's going to be completed. Uh, okay. You know the. So it's been taped. It's so been taped, yes. Yeah, yeah. So the sample is, because I didn't click on it, I'm sorry, but that's of the first round? Correct. Okay. Yes, so you can, just to give you an example of what it was like that Brandon was going to be going through, um, we'll be sending this out in our uh, monthly superintendent's update. Um, so at the end of the month, there will be opportunities, I think, for our this board, once the link becomes available, we'll send it to the board. So you can kind of get a view. And then uh, Brandon can send it home his principal, whichever week you choose to so that the community gets to see it. She's a, here's exactly what he's talking about. I like it. It's it's a different way for us to communicate with people. It's a different way for us to get information out. Something other than you know building structures or review revision or COVID or, or things. It's it's purely academic based. It's all about teaching and instruction. And it gives you a sense of, of you know, although we're different across the board in our SCU 16, it, it, it shows the collaboration. Uh, I mean, you can sense the collaboration between schools that, that in many areas we're on the exact same page and we just might get there a little bit differently, which is which is awesome. Yeah, I think that's exciting. Um, I'm sure it's bringing people out of their comfort zone now. <laughs> but it is, yeah. it is, it's more natural probably as a viewer, but less natural as a participant, yeah, yeah. I would say. Yeah. Like one of those things. Yeah. It'd be good to get the link up on like, our main site too. Yeah. So that everyone can see it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And it's always available on Blue Hawk Media, which is the main hub, main YouTube channel okay. for SAU 16, where any meeting, including our meeting here, is always uh, stored. So the video of every meeting is archived there as well. So we'll make sure that we widely distribute that. You'll be a star. Yeah. Starts on an autograph. <laughs> Um, the uh, school safety and Alice training, this is just um, being born out of our most recent school um, security and student safety task force meeting that we had. I think, uh, Tiffany, you're going to be reporting out on that, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. But I wanted to just highlight uh, and remind um, for the purpose of being in minutes as well as anyone who watches the the, these meetings that we do have um, on our website an entire section devoted to safety uh, that we talk a lot about our Alice training for not only our elementary school students but our secondary students um, we have the, the scripts of what teachers and our trainers use for uh, those two levels you, you'll find there are two very different tones very different approaches there's uh, an hour long video for each of two presentations that uh, we did. It was Associate Superintendent 
Esther Asbell three years ago, we did presentations to elementary parents. And also did presentations for secondary parents. And so those videos are there. There are a ton of links to look at different um, safety um, features or programming uh, measures that we take that we want to share with an SAU 16. Uh, we don't want to put all our, all of our secrets. We want the bad guys to get our secrets. But um, there's a lot that we do that we just want to keep steering parents to so they can feel good about um, given recent events last spring and uh, early summer um, that their students are safe in their schools that we go to extreme measures. SAU 16 is viewed as the model in the state. I think Tiffany, you heard that loud and clear um, from the police chiefs in our uh, SAU. Um, but we don't rest on those laws. We want to keep adding. We want to keep improving. So that means we want to keep sharing the information with people and helping them feel comfortable. And if they don't, to reach out directly first to their school principal and talk about that. I know at our joint board meeting, um, a mom had shared that she had heard a friend's daughter uh, was feeling traumatized by the Alice training. So we respect and honor that. We want to acknowledge that. We want to help uh, not only mom, but mom's child through that and make sure that the principal um, has an opportunity to do that with the students at the school if there's such an issue. So um, I just want to talk about it as much as we can. We can try and talk about it in all of our board uh, meetings. Make sure we're, we're circling back with our parents who are expressing feeling that way um, because we don't want any student to be feeling unsafe while we're trying to train them how to be safe, if that makes sense. Um, that's not that's not our intent. And I know that you had some drills yeah. um, that have come up and I can talk about those. Yeah. Yeah, we, we um, we've had two so far and there there are two of the of the less stressful drills. Um, we had to drop over a hole in the case of a tornado or a storm coming through the building or through the area. And um, a secure campus and that's used uh, typically there's an emergency within a building. Like we had an actual secure campus happen with a child uh, with a broken arm recently, and um, it just gives it gives the child the privacy that they need as they're exiting the building. And you know, so we've had those. We do have an evacuation coming up, uh, which we're, we're going through uh, with our staff with students right now. Uh, right now, it's scheduled for Monday, and I'll be informing parents tomorrow. Uh, for every for every Alice drill, we always let the parents know prior to the drill and explain what the drill is for and how we do it um, and we also had i just brought this up yeah we also had books um, that our teachers have access to to share with their students uh, one is called i'm not scared i'm prepared that's something that, that our, our school counselor has in our office that our staff have access to to help them guide those discussions with our students um, so yeah it's it's something we take very seriously and um, the more information we get to parents to help their kids process through it uh, you know the better so it's it's um, like Dr. Wright said, it's something we want to stay on top of, and if parents do um, have questions or concerns, then, then, then they're always welcome to reach out to me and talk, and talk to them. Thank you. Yeah. And then we usually sometimes follow up after the fact with an email, too, right? Yeah. So just let sometimes. Yeah, it, yeah. You know, then it went well, well and the kids were, our, our, our kids are, um, they're accustomed to taking these types of things very seriously, and I'm, I'm proud of them every, every time we have one uh, because it's it's something they do very well. Uh, for the evacuations and for the lockdowns, when we have those, we usually try to get Chief of Age here uh, involved and um, our director of security at the SCU. Uh, we invite him if he's available to come over these as well. Um, I put on the, the agenda that we wanted to uh, that wanted to get ahead of. Public hearing on the budget and delivery session to January, and February, respectively. And I know that um, Lisa had had some exchange with the town on those. So, um, what I'm proposing, at least for the public hearing on the budget, is on January 10th. That is in the window of the week in which uh, public hearings on budgets can be permitted or scheduled for SB2 towns. Um, and as far as the deliberative session, it would be that first week of February, February 4th being the first day that the deliberative can be held, the 11th being the last. I never recommend waiting for the last day because if you have a snow day, you're not allowed to reschedule by law unless there's, I think, some act of God that allows you to reschedule. So people would have to come out in the snow um, 
and that would be safe for the residents of East Kingston. So um, it would be my proposal for February 4, but unless you had some information as yeah, well. Yeah, Grace from the town reached out, um, and the select board was recommending that February 4th date. Um, they were tentatively proposing those same times we used last year, which they were at 10 a.m., and we were at 1. Correct. Um, we had talked about, you know, would we want to switch with them? Um, I think for, for me, the later one will work better. I know last year Andy and I both coached basketball. We mm -hmm. probably will have games that, that Saturday morning, so 1 o'clock would probably work better for Yeah, they want to save time too. Okay. okay. Yeah, and, and the public hearing on the budget is typically um, we have the hearing and then it's followed by our board meeting. It's a more limited agenda in that we tackle the budget predominantly. We typically we close the meeting having a budget that we feel is ready to go forward to a deliberative session. Um, and so um, if, that, if that date works, we'd like to lock that into our master calendar. What we're trying to do too is we always manage, we have seven school districts, as you know, seven school boards, five of which follow an SB2 governance um, schedule. And that means that we typically have four weeknights, Monday through Thursday, in order to get five public hearings. So there has to be an overlap with someone. Um, so we try to strategically schedule those ahead of time so that we're aware of them. Because we have one director of finance and operations <laughs> and one assistant director of finance and operations and we can work with that and so i appreciate having the audience up on that in october for a january meeting um, i think both of those dates look good we don't need to no action no action no i, I will just schedule those yep. and um, we'll put those forward at, in, on the calendar so the public's aware of them as well okay. and will we have our first iteration of the budget at the next meeting we'd like it yeah. to be here in november yeah okay. all of our boards again because we have to settle the SAU budget next Monday um, with the joint board. So. Uh, Paper Education America, I linked here as well. It's an online tutoring service. Um, we had uh, received some information back in September from the Department of Education about um, tutor.com, which is a free service that the state was paying for um, to provide K through 12 tutoring services, excuse me, 6 through 12 tutoring services for students in the state of New Hampshire. Um, we dug into a little bit, a couple of superintendents pushed back, um, and we had the Department of Education attorney involved in the conversation because our concern was um, they tutor.com had not yet signed a data privacy agreement, which by law we have to have a data privacy agreement, particularly with any software or vendor software vendor or vendor is going to work with students because student privacy is now protected uh, even more strictly under the Hampshire state law. They had, were working towards it. <clears throat> the other piece was uh, they don't hire the tutors. Um, they work with a third party who has the two that does the uh, vetting and hiring of tutors which means we didn't have, so imagine here in East Kingston um, or, or at CMS, a student from East Kingston, sixth grader going online to tutor.com and working with someone and not knowing really whether or not that person's been vetted through a background check. And it's 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night. And that made us feel a little creepy. So we weren't real confident in that. The commissioner has since come out and said that they believe that they're well within the law of the signed data privacy agreement which is, which is great, um, but it still hasn't solved the issue of who's hiring, who's doing the background check. We um, look for a solution to that because we don't want other districts getting free tutoring and, and our students aren't getting any. So we discovered paper education and um, they're fairly expensive. They are a K through 12 tutoring service. We entered a pilot program, so I, I did misspeak when I, uh, we were at the curriculum philosophy. We're in a pilot program with just six through 12 through the end of December, and then we are gonna be K through 12 in January. And um, we got a pretty significant grant from paper. Um, it's a $62,000 contract, to which we are only paying 9,000. 
total, not East Kingston, the SAU. So we felt that that was close enough to free that the uh, tutors in paper are employees of paper, that we know that their um, hiring process is one that we would follow if you walked into the SAU office and you're paying attention to you know the background. Um, and there are a, a lot of safeguards that are built in with regard to who students are working with um, as tutors. So um, I just wanted to provide the link for you to check out their website and see information just to make them you aware that come January we'll be turning online working with our elementary principals about how we can yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm happy to see K through five included in the index, and then also to um, for the older students. Does paper have like flexible school time too? Like they do. They go. Yeah, they're twenty four seven as well. Oh, they so are. Okay. You know anything like my senior? Right. Um, yeah. He's wide awake at, at midnight. Yeah. One in the morning because he's worried about something. He can get online or something. Um, and take care of. It whatever it is in the weekends. Holidays might be a little tricky, but uh, bye month. Bye. Uh, thank you. Um, but as far as like nights off hours and weekends, that's their, that's their specialty. Because during the school day, um, they're typically in classrooms and, and with teachers and such. Um, it's designed really for the student who's in the middle of doing something, or you know, if you're like I was, I'd sit there in math class and I'd understand it in math, and then I'd go home and I'd look at it and like, I just don't remember what we did. I can get to somebody right away that's able to help me with that in the moment, which is the most important piece uh, of the tutoring. Also planned tutoring where you have an upcoming test or an assignment um, and you get scheduled help with that. And somebody walks you through it. So we thought it was pretty good value. We thought that uh, Big Paper's trying to break into New Hampshire nationally and we have several uh, school districts in the southeast region, which is uh, about 23 school districts in, in the Seacoast area, that are going to be working with, with them. So we, uh, we're looking forward to the pilot as we, we work through the end of December and then add to it. And I have one other uh, oh, just, item. Just one second. Oh, sorry, Melissa. Abby, I just want to let you know that we do still have six -ish minutes left on our public input period. If you do want to participate, just let us know. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I, I just want to just uh, remind the board that um, we do have non-public. There are two items I don't want to bring up. Um, one, one I can say is that um, we're, we're going to be discussing uh, wages and compensations for support staff. Um, and I think it's important for the public to know that uh, that conversation can take place in non-public because it, it falls under item A. The numbers are not yet known and uh, we're not attaching anything in public to uh, individuals, but I do want the public to know that we will be doing that in non-public and the other item uh, falls under uh, retirement resignations and nominations. That concludes my report. Thank you. All right, approval of our public board meeting minutes from September 14th. Did you have any changes? I did not see any. Okay. I had one, and Brandon, I wanted to ask you what, um, under your principal's report, it said um, Mr. French spoke to having families attend all school assemblies this year. The way I read that made it sound like you would have families attending all the assemblies. I don't think that was what you meant. I think you no. meant if a child was presenting, would be attending. So I, I think we just want to edit if that. The child was presenting, presenting or performing at the assembly. Yes, yep. just so that people are, it isn't confusing to parents that everyone would be invited for all assemblies. Yes. Okay, that was. Yeah, I think it it gives further clarification. I didn't read that as that, but it's if it's further clarification that be interpreted that way. I think it's good to change that. Yeah. Okay, so with that added, I'll make a motion to approve the September 14th meeting minutes. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Staff handbook. Uh, yep, so I'm just gonna, uh, before I get to that, just do my regular principal report. Uh, okay. Uh, 
Fall Fall Conference coming up next uh, Thursday, and which is the 20th of October and the 27th. And they're all going to be student-led conferences as we started last year, K through five. And we're excited about that again in year number two. Our enrollment um, as of last week was 131 students, 22 in kindergarten, 28 in first grade, 12 in second grade, 22 in third grade, 19 in fourth grade, 28 in fifth grade. Uh, we had an amazing open house uh, a couple weeks ago that um, was a family a family oriented open house, which is a bit different from what has been done in the past here. And um, it was uh, totally student centered, uh, with students kind of leading the show with their parents around our building. And uh, the feedback uh, from uh, families was it was awesome, and I uh, obviously you know, enjoyed it. Uh, the feedback from the staff was the exact same. Well, um, it was something they haven't done here before, and uh, we were so excited to make it a, a family event. Uh, our UA teachers, uh, our, you know, our PE and, and, and art and music, they, they, for the first time, the ones that are, are here who have gone through more of the parent information night, uh, for the first time felt that they were part of it because um, the scavenger hunts and things the classroom teachers plan for their, their families involved every every UA and stopping by there and visiting the rooms. Mr. Gay had students on the drum set. Uh, Mrs. Bastille had artwork all throughout the building. Our steam room was by far the biggest hit of the night. I think every kid spent, you know, five to ten minutes in their steam room with their parents showing them kind of what they're already learning just in the first month of school. So again it was a it, it was an amazing night that that um, that uh, our students really put on. We had 115 out of our 131 families attend, which was amazing. Yeah, yep. it's absurdly high. Yeah, yeah it's great. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. That's one. So we are very excited about that. We have our our Harvest Fest coming up again on the 28th, um, where, where students um, are going to be participating in, in, in different events throughout the day. So we're we're, we're kind of in that in that that uh, Harvest Fest season that, that the kids are excited about. Um, I wanted to include our community engagement. We had our, our senior social this morning, um, and uh, this was an opportunity for uh, some of our community members to come in. It was, it was PTO uh, facilitated, and um, they coordinated the whole thing. I just coordinated uh, the events uh, with our students here in the building with our teachers, but um, we had our kindergarten students uh, doing a poem about apples, and we had our third and fourth grade, some of our third and fourth grade leaders um, talking about legacy letters that we started last year um, that uh, our third and fourth grade students, uh, it's, it's type of pen pal type thing. It's not something that they have direct outlook with the person. And Mrs. Ward started that last year with her third and fourth grade students and the library is involved in that. So it's, it's um, something that they talked about today and some of our, some of our community members today took legacy letters on with them to get that ball rolling again. And um, we also had uh, Mr. K had our, all of our fifth grade students sing a couple songs and our new EKES rock band, which uh, was amazing today to hear them after only a few rehearsals uh, perform today, Stand By Me. And um, the feedback that we received just in that short time was uh, a, a lot of thanks and appreciation for uh, making it happen along with the PTO. So it was a, it was a great way to start the year for them. So. Uh, we have uh, the uh, introduction to technology uh, that Dr. Branton talked about a couple weeks ago. Um, scheduled for November 16th here at school at 4.30 p.m. Amy McDonald, one of our former parents who uh, works in the SAU, is going to be here to uh, lead anyone who wants to come learn more about how to use technology um, and, and access apps and, and Zoom and things like that uh, scheduled on that day. So on November 16th, 4.30 p.m. And our first community engagement meeting um, that Andy and I sit on is scheduled for October 24th. Um, at the November meeting, along with the budget, I'll be talking about, uh, I'll be reviewing our, our fall data and benchmarking at that, at that meeting as well. And uh, last, uh, we uh, spent a lot of time over the summer um, revamping our EKES uh, staff handbook. And the majority of it um, comes straight from the teacher contract. A lot of the wording um, and, and language comes straight from the teacher contract. In addition to uh, the board policies that we have listed on our, 
on our board webpage, and all of our teachers uh, have reviewed it um, and um, provided feedback uh, that we kind of kept going back and forth. There's a working document, I think, probably since last March. Yeah, uh, sounds right. Dr. Uh, Livingston, who was our, our former um, interim director of HR, um, she she kind of took the lead on that and um, got the ball rolling. And again, it was a it was a working document right up until last week. Yeah, so it, 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 there's a lot of time and effort uh, that was spent by many people, and um, our, our teachers are pleased that it's kind of uh, that, that that term one stop shopping. They're, they're not looking all over the place for board policy, teacher contract language. Uh, school policy, it, it's all right there for them to view and to refer to if and when needed. Did you say it already went out? The oh. teachers have had access to it. Oh, okay. The okay. teachers have had access oh, okay. to it. It's not public or anything yeah. right now. Okay, yeah. The only thing that I just thought as you were talking is um, would it be best if the board goes on here too, or would that not be something that you would see in a handbook? Staff Typically, it wouldn't be on a staff handbook no. okay. because of the operational nature of it. With the board's a governance okay. body, um, I think it's super appropriate to have the board goals on the um, the agenda. Um, but we can also, if you'd like, add it to the board website. That might be another appropriate an appropriate place for that. Um, but on a on a staff handbook because it's operational, we typically wouldn't find it there. I mean, if the board was to oh, compel yeah. us to do it, we would do it. But no, no, it's, it's just not usually. A, Spot for yeah, I just wasn't there. Yeah. No, Brandon, this is. I mean, I read through it all. It's it, it's very well done, and I like that everything is everything's linked. So it's not it's not a matter of kind of digging and trying to find things. If you have a question, it's a question and answer format. If you find the answer, they can link to it. Yeah, I don't I don't think we've had a handbook in the six years I've been here. <laughs> <laughs> not that I remember. I remember the student one, but not the staff, so. I remember reading one when I worked here, yeah. but I don't think it was this in-depth, but I do think it's really good, too, and I think that if you were, like, new to our SAU and you sat down and read this, you know, you'd have a lot of questions answered. So, um, obviously, the staff would read it now, but any new staff, I feel like they almost need, like, an hour to yeah. come in on yeah. the clock and just be able to sit down because it is so important. It just goes over so much. So this is part of the um, the mandatory trainings, I guess you could say, that our staff have to do every year as they come on board, whether they're 30 years into it or year one. You know, like the Alice trainings and uh, sexual harassment training, that type of thing. They all have to do with this as part of their kind of mandatory uh, trainings that they would. You have to sign off and view this, you know, every single year. And then I just had a question about the field trips and the CPR and the first aid yep. certification. Is that like a one-time thing that they would have to do, or is that something that needs to be updated? CPR is every two years. Every two years. Yep. So that okay. So we were um, we were certified. Uh, I need to check the dates, but we're, we're all the different oh, yes. field trips so you now. Oh yeah. Take it as like a whole staff. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. All right, so we are looking for promotion of the handbook. Please. Okay. And then, um, do we need to say anything about, so if there are updates to the handbook that are kind of inconsequential, like a staff replacement name, uh, a date change for next year, those types of things that don't really affect, then um, it won't need to come to the board for those sort of updates. They'll just be done annually. Yeah. Okay. yeah. If there's a substantive change, change of policy that requires us to change something significant, or if um, new superintendent changes the professional attire and has expectations for, you know, those kinds of substantive changes that would come back to the board for approval. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the staff handbook. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Um, Chair's report. We'll move on to the board committee assignments. Uh, I don't have anything because we haven't met yet. Uh, superintendent hasn't met policy. We do have a meeting scheduled. Twenty fourth. Twenty fourth. Yeah, I will be it's away, on the but Heather's there, so. Okay. Um, so I won't have anything until November. Um, we already spoke. We an engagement meeting. Yep. Um, superintendent search. I guess we won't get an update from Andy. Um, Tiffany, you want to speak? 
Yes. So, first 18 security. So I have um, takeaways from that is that the state received 10 million from the federal government for our school safety, for school safety upgrades, and that all of our elementary schools have applied for grants. Um, here in East Kingston, we um, are looking for radios and a boost in self uh, service. So could be good. And so another takeaway um, is Richard Kane has been working hard to meet all of the annexes set forth by Homeland Security. And like you mentioned, we're doing the fire drills. And I think you did a bus evacuation drill too, right? We did. Yeah. Yep. So that's all underway. And yeah, it's commendable the work that we do here with safety and security for sure. Yeah. Um, and so then House Bill 1178 was mentioned at the meeting. And let's see. We've got to go to um, So House Bill 1178, I just wanted to read like a brief summary of what that is. And that um, it's prohibiting the state from enforcing any federal statute regulation or presidential executive order that restricts or regulates the right of the people to keep and bear arms. <clears throat> and uh, Dr. Ryan had presented this with a follow-up, an excerpt from the frequently asked questions from the New Hampshire Department of Justice, the Office of the Attorney General. And what it talks about is what is the effect of House Bill 1178 on school safety? And it basically says reporting a potential or perceived threat to safety does not violate the law. The principle of see something, say something remains a critical component of protecting public safety in our communities, especially in our New Hampshire schools. And so under New Hampshire law, students are not authorized to bring or possess firearms within a safety school zone without prior written authorization from the superintendent or designate. State and local law enforcement officers are empowered to respond, investigate, and take action with respect to any potential threats to school pursuant to their authority under the New Hampshire Criminal Code. The passage of RSA 158-E, House Bill 1178 does not alter this. So I'm not sure how I did that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, that was perfect. And then we asked the question of the chiefs. Yes. What would you do differently now with this, this bill as law? And Chief LePage specifically said, we would do nothing differently. Yeah. If you call us, we're coming. Yeah. If you don't feel safe, we're coming. Yes, and I think that's the biggest takeaway in the presentation. And then reading this through again is, you know, the, it was legislated and passed and signed in like June. Yes. And so I think it was good just to have like a little update so there's no confusion right. about that. So what it means and that it just, we're not really going to be changing anything. We're still staying to our same policies that are in place. I think that's all I had for that. Um, unless I missed anything. Do you think anything? It was, it was the Rich Kane show, uh, for yeah. sure. He had a lot to update <laughs> on. Uh, he provided a lot on safety, security, the EOPs, and, the, and you touched on the emergency operation plans that we filed and were in compliance with the rest yes. of the state. So, yes. um, yeah, yeah, I think you covered it well. Yeah, that's huge. We're definitely um, are, we're in compliance. It's a lot of work, and I think they do a great job with that. And then the SAU Budget Advisory Committee. Sorry, I think that's what I call it. So uh, we met and reviewed the proposed SAU 16 fiscal year FY24 budget, and we gave some uh, feedback and on additional details that we thought our constituents would want to see. And that is going to be presented uh, this Monday, October 17th at 6 p.m. at Julia's Restaurant at SST, uh, Linden Street in Exeter. And it's just a great time to come and hear that and get you know, public thoughts. So we encourage that. And you can always email us. I was talking to Molly earlier, and that proposed drafted budget will be on the SAU 16 website. So if you wanted to review it ahead of time under uh, SAU 16 budgets and elections. The 
request for the software upgrade too is on there. Uh, so there's going to be a request for software for the um, accounting in our district, and you can get more information on that too. On the website. And the wellness committee. So I have not heard anything on that. So uh, I'm assuming that's going to be happening until like November. It will um, certainly be convening once all of the boards have their budgets, because that's Molly's. Molly oversees the wellness committee. That's because it, it really is, is part of our. Um, oh gosh, I'm forgetting the, the legal term. Um, it has to do with loss. And so it's something that Primex requires us to do, and the law requires us to do, is to have a wellness committee. Uh, and so um, she's overseeing that, and so it will be another month and a half or so before she's able to, to breathe. Uh, and she, she's put together, so thank you uh, for being on that committee. And we are still waiting to hear on a couple of other board members from other boards because we want representation across the board. I'm Um, all right, we'll also have to add to the board the new committee from the joint board. We will. We'll have, I think, some information for you okay. on 17. At, at the next meeting. Yes, uh, we'll be actually leading the joint board through uh, an activity that may, um, upon reflection, have the board consider something different. Okay. Um, and so I, I work with Patrick on that. And seeing as I think you're chairing, yeah. You and I will chat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think you saw some glimpses of the emails that we had exchanged. Uh, yes. Explain what, yep. uh, what, what we're going to do. But. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we'll move on to goal updates. So for goal number one, um, as Brandon said in his reporting, we're going to be discussing that next month, and we'll have the fall data and benchmarking. So um, nothing new. And so, um, And for goal three, we've uh, we had our first meeting on the five-year capital improvement plan. Um, Dr. Ryan presented us with a optimized format for kind of getting that information together. And uh, Wayne and Brandon are going to be working on populating that data, and then we'll be meeting to discuss kind of priorities. Um, it'll give us a, a better picture of improvements that need to be made to the building. Yeah, Wayne was very engaged. Was excited to see that. He knows his building. Yes, he does. <laughs> okay, um, old business. I don't think we had anything. Let's go to the technology. Okay. Uh, new business. Technically, would fall uh, would be the wage and compensation discussion for support staff that will be okay. taking into non-public. Okay. All right, and we already. Um, I'll provide the communication from Grace and, and reply back to her on the dates and times. Perfect. And I'll, I'll let Sharon know uh, in the office so she can lock it in. Okay. All right. Uh, I think that's everything. All right. So. Head into non public under RSA 91A32. Do we, do we get another public input or not before you go non public? Um, no, but if, if you have a comment, I'm, I'm fine. I got just two quick things. Yeah. This grant for the tutoring, who, who gave us the grant? So the, uh, the company is called Paper Education America, and they granted 52 and change, 52,000 and change. So it's uh, basically they've waived close to 52,000 Okay, change. so probably next year then that will not be repeated, the grant will not be repeated? Or... Um, I, don't, I don't know, um, I don't know. I know that right now our, our bill is for 9,000 yeah. over the year. Um, and it's a one, it is a one year contract. Um, I don't know what next year looks like. We, we didn't look that far out. Okay. And for Brandon, um, on the uh, program, was it the 16th of November? I may not have the date. Yeah, 16th of November, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
how are you going to get word out and is there anything that people need to bring or everything's provided or what you know yeah. so I'm, I'm going to be um, sending you an email with all the information to pass on to your uh, to your peers it's going to go through the library as well I'm and I'm going to talk to Andy about mm -hmm. including it in the newsletter that goes out to the library and I, I would love trending in the carriage town news I'm not sure if it's I'm not sure what their deadline is but it's it should wonderful. be good Okay. It should be good if you do it yeah. soon. Okay. Yeah. I'll pass that on to Andy about the um, newsletter in the carriage now. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. May I ask a quick question? Um, David, when they do the budget presentation on Monday, I guess, mm -hmm. are they going to talk about, um, I know you guys don't usually focus on revenue too, too much. Are you going to talk about revenue loss and how you're compensating for that this year? That would be a great, uh, for an SAU, I mean, because you have the retirement, which is going down, which is like, yay, but Correct. also the one-time revenue loss that came from the state and the retirement um, funding that we got, all that's going away. So the tax impact's going to be... So in an SAU budget discussion, that would not be reflected in the budget presentation, but for each of the seven school districts, most definitely. Okay, I just want them to understand, because when it goes to, like, the tax impact... Yep. It's, it could be significant, and it's something that the constituents are going to have a really hard time thinking we'll raise the budget. Correct. That's the state's own money that they gave us. It's a more official inflation. Um, I also just wanted to ask, for the CIP, or I'm sorry, for your capital plan, are you guys including how you're funding it in the um, amortization out for it so we can see? Not yet. Not on the financial side of it. Presently, right now, it's going to be to prioritize what the projects are. Yeah, but wouldn't funding be part of that? So funding estimates, and then when we look at what, so they're going to be prioritized first uh, by safety. Yep. Right. Yep. And so you follow by safety, preservation of asset, yep. ongoing work, and so we want to identify first what the board and the school priorities are. So the board and the principal may have two different ideas about what the priority is. Yeah. There's an estimate of funding for it. Okay. If if we well when we get to that part. That's where we have to look at what the funding impact and amortization is going to be. And what your debt debt limit is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I was going to say, do you have like a list when you put it together that qualifies as a capital project versus just a regular budgetary item? Is it like the standard fifty thousand dollars on a particular? No. Um, we hadn't had that depth of conversation. I think we wanted to include either. everything. Yeah. So okay. even if it was something as simple as this is a $500 repair, but it's a safety concern, let's put it on there. Okay. And I think we're just looking to have some better visibility. I mean, Wayne knows the building um, yeah. inside and out, and we just want to make sure that we understand kind of, you know, the major thing is the roof right now. That's the, that'll be the big discussion this year. No, um, I think it's, it's, I think it's awesome. Yeah. I just think um, it might be a good idea when, when it's totally done, when you're like totally at the end, yeah. to list qualifications or lack thereof as a transparency item I know for ours there's a lot of confusion about what's in there why it's in there and what it leaves what that means so just maybe kind of putting that kind of listing together might really help you so that when people are reading it um, after the fact it doesn't come back and be like you didn't include this or why didn't you or why is this in there it just might really help um, and I just wanted to say for the support staff if we can do anything to bring them up to the level that everybody has this because we're losing them or we're lucky we're not losing I don't know. I was worried about it. It's not that much that we make cool. But thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Eric. Thank thank Here's the motion. So we'll call. All right, and this is going to be under. Oh, it should be this. Okay. Egg. 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 Yeah. Okay. The motion. Okay. All those in favor? All those in favor? Bye, guys. make a motion to um, authorize Brandon to pay out additional compensation to our paraprofessionals who, upon us not being able to find a substitute, are required to cover a classroom at a rate of $80 per day or $40 for a half a day. Can I second the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So I'd like to make a motion to accept the superintendent's recommendation for personnel. Okay. 
A second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Perfect. All right. And we will adjourn at 7.06. Great. Thank you.